Hey everybody, this is Damien Gerger from The Breakdown Show and today's guest is Dave Martini. They founded The Silencer Shop. It's interesting when we hear the word silencer for guns, we have images in our head that likely have no bearing in reality for most people. The next time they see a silencer in real life will be the first time, just like me. To learn more, head to The Silencer Shop's website, that's silencershop.com. For most people, Silencers are something from the movies, yet for many Americans, suppressors are part of normal range day. Dave joins P.D. Turner on the Breakdown Show to demystify silencers and help us by answering questions. Don't forget to support the Breakdown Show by going on breakdownshow.com and donate to the PayPal link, or you can simply subscribe to any podcast platform, or you can watch our videos for free. Don't forget that you can buy our merch. You can find everything on breakdownshow.com. Also, don't forget to donate to our veteran friends at savethebrave.org. We fight together PTSD. All right, enough of me. Here comes Dave Martini. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this East. This is Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morata. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hey, this is Dave Matheny, and you're watching The Break It Down Show. And now, The Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Hey, man, it's cool to talk to you. It's interesting. Uh, I wrote this in the, uh, the the show promo is when we talk about silencers, most of us have never seen or touched one or heard one. You know, we don't uh, we don't have a comfortable feeling about silencers. And yet you're in the silencer selling business. Not only that, you're like <laughs> franchising and really getting involved in it. And I thought, well, this is a fascinating topic. We just had on uh, the person who wrote the biography for John Browning. And uh, you realize just how pervasive his role is in the weapons industry. And then you have all these add-on industries like silencers. I, I just had to talk to you, and I, I appreciate you doing what you do. Can you just do a real basic rundown on who you are and what the heck the silencer shop is? You know, it's a my, my background, I'm a computer programmer. I was for 20 years. I was not really in the gun industry at all before this. It kind of happened by an accident. It was an accident of history for me. But the, uh, you know, as far as silencers go, I think there's this perception that they're some kind of a dangerous weapon in their own right. And the reality is people get that from watching TV and movies, but the reality is they are nothing more than a safety device. They reduce sound, not silent like the movies, but reduced. They yeah. reduce recoil. They increase accuracy. They're, they're great for young shooters, hunters. They're, they're just a safety device. Well, that disagrees completely with my personal narrative. <laughs> so, uh, because I'm a military guy and I worked a lot with special operations folks because I went outside the, outside the wire a lot, I, I had access to, to silencers and, and to use them. And you're right, they are remarkably loud compared to what you think they are. But boy, are they way quieter. And you're, when you're on the range all the time trying to be proficient, it is nice to not have the big boom all the day. I mean, sure, you're wearing hearing protection. Sometimes I... In my case, I double up a lot of times where I'll have yeah. plugs, plugs and cans uh, because I've been around so many big booms. You think about that, that cumulative effect, you know, of having an M16 right next to your face or an M4 and it's just boom going off all the time. It doesn't matter how much hearing protection you have. It's just a lot of sound. You know, and I think people get their idea of how loud a gun is from TV, too. Yeah, I, mean, I think the reality is a gun on TV is like a silencer in real life. A gun in real life is so much louder than people even have any, people don't have anything to equate it to, right? It's super loud. Yeah, it is it's super loud. When you think about like those uh, World War II battles and those guys, they didn't run around with hearing protection in. You know, and it's just like when you hear how loud an explosion is and how a, a gun, and this gun literally, in the case of a rifle, it is right next to your face. I mean, your face yeah. is yeah. in a lot of cases. So a silencer makes a lot of sense. Uh, do you have an idea of how many, uh, you know, a hitman, you know, the, the, the myth, right? That there's a hitman out there with a silencer and there's four dead people in a room and it doesn't make any noise. Does that even happen in reality ever? You know, it doesn't. And you, you think about this from the, from the perspective of a criminal. The reality is a silencer doesn't make the gun silent. 
Other nice. people can still hear you, and it makes it eight inches longer. <laughs> so <laughs> criminals, they're they're not looking for. Hang on, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not looking for safety for themselves, right? They're they're looking for for concealability, and a silencer kind of works against that. Yeah. So it's the exact opposite of what people think. Yeah, and you're right. It's just the screwing it on in a room, you know. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, can you give us an idea of how loud a silenced weapon is, and and is it does it change according to rifle, long rifle, carbine? Uh, you know. Oh yeah. As rounds, how does talk about the sound? What it actually is. So it on an AR-15, which you mentioned, you know, using the M4s in the military. It's a basically a very similar weapon. You ba- the top of the line suppressor on an AR-15 is as loud as a jack a jackhammer on concrete. The only the only suppressors that even get close to what you see in the movies are the ones you run on 22s. But everything else is actually pretty pretty significant still. Still safer, more comfortable, and especially for hunters, like with the bolt action gun, it's as loud as an AR-15, but the sound is actually further from your ear. So mm. it can be a lot more comfortable to the shooter, even though it's the same loudness. Yeah. There are a lot of factors. Yeah. Would you say, is it as loud as a, a firecracker at that case? Or is there any kind of sound that we might be familiar with that we would say, oh, that's how loud it is with the silencer? You know, it's, it's 100, 130 decibels. Like I said, that's a jackhammer on concrete. And that's loud. That's way beyond a firecracker in most cases. I'm sure you can get something that's that loud. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I, I, most people don't experience sounds that loud in real life. Right. And then without a silencer, how loud, how loud are these weapons? You know, you can, you can be 160, 170 decibels, which is pretty much the equivalent of sticking your head inside of an operating jet engine. Right. Right. Yeah. So just crazy, crazy loud. I live under a flight path for a John Wayne airport here in Southern California. And those jets are pretty loud and they're, yeah. you know, I don't know, a couple thousand feet up or whatever, and it, it can be a lot of noise. And you're right. It's, um, you know, what I, what I think, when I think of like an open fire on, there are oftentimes when, especially right now, because 4th of July is coming up and people have gone to Nevada to get their fireworks. You know, you hear certain fireworks, and you're like, that's an M16 sound right there. Very, very similar, but it's also however many blocks away, right? That's how yeah. loud unsilenced weapon is. Yeah. But, Silence, I, you know, and I've only shot handguns that were silenced. Do you feel like they're quieter than uh, an M4 or a long rifle? You know, I, I tend to be, it, they, they work out to be roughly the same. You can get a subsonic pistol where you're shooting like a 45, for example, where you can get into lower decibel levels. You can get down to the 120s, for example, still very loud, but significantly quieter. Right. Um, I, I tend to shoot a lot more with rifles. That's just my... Mm-hmm. personality right that's your home how yeah. loud is the voice normally like is it a, a, we must be able to get our voices above 100 decibels right but not oh much yeah more. okay yeah you you can get above 100 decibels it's a it's a logarithmic scale so every right around three decibels the sound doubles mm-hmm. right so going from 120 to 130 is a pretty giant you know huge jump from 110 to 120 is a huge jump yeah so I suspect you get your voice up into the into the one lower one ten one lower teen one teens right if you really focus on it. <laughs> my uh, my uncle Arthur shot, taught me how to shoot. So I mean, I'm sure he'll probably watch this episode. So I want to say a little shout out to him as, as I uh, fumble around trying to get some of these things right. I'm sure he's like. <laughs> uh, the grain or the amount of gunpowder in a round a given round must also have an impact because that's where the energy is coming from right so if that's you have a, a magnum round that's got to be louder right yep the yep. amount of powder the length of the barrel because the, a longer barrel that pressure, that pressure will dissipate will more by the time the bullet comes out right. there there are a lot of factors semi-automatics tend not to be as quiet as bolt actions because you've got sound coming through the ejection port pretty much feeding right into your ear right I, yeah, that gives me another question too. I want to ask is, if you have someone like a forty-five, or if you lighten the grain up on purpose to, you know, like you're just shooting target rounds a short distance, you don't need a lot of gunpowder to get them out the door uh, or out the, out of the muzzle. Uh, that is also acquired around, right? Like it's it's a subsonic yeah. round potentially, and and so there's just less stuff to go boom. 
That's right. That's exactly right. Less powder and less the getting that velocity below the sound barrier makes a difference. And then the other thing, uh, from my own experience in shooting uh, silence things, I can hear the action of the of the pistol more. Like it's more like a, there's more room maybe for that sound to come through where you hear the you know that the machine part of the of the gun. Is that yep. true for the, the rifles and everything too? Oh, absolutely. The other thing you you can actually you start picking out sounds you normally wouldn't hear because you're not wearing as much hearing protection as a big part of it. But like the bullet hitting the target, right? That yeah. becomes part of the experience. Yeah. Whereas without a silencer, it's not. Yeah, uh, I'm here to tell you with my uh, concealable shield pistol, I can I can reach out and touch a man sized target at 140 meters. I oh, have, that's actually really impressive. Yeah, it's <laughs> And so I had a bell, like a school bell, way, way, way out. And I was like, beep, beep. <laughs> and I was like, done, you know, I mean, the bell is, I don't know, 10 inches, eight inches, something like that. And, uh, I just wanted to say that on the record next, that's most, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> but does the, uh, okay. So my, my pistol shoots pretty much flat. Like if I, if I put the dot on it, I'm going to hit it and. You know, I don't have to do much windage with it, even at, at a distance like that. Does the silencer take something out of the bullet as it goes through, or does it change the trajectory or the flight path? No, that that's a myth. You actually will. The part of that is you get more velocity with a silencer. So and it's measurable because you basically are extending the barrel without friction, right? So you, you get more velocity, but it can change your point of impact. Now, the actual accuracy is better. So you have to read, let's say it's off by two inches, a hundred yards. You just recite it in and now you have smaller groups. Mm. So it's a, you just have a lot of times you do have to cite it in again with a suppressor. How does that work? I mean, you've got rifling in your, in your barrel. And so it reaches the end of that rifling is the silencer actually, how does the silencer attach? And does that make the end of the barrel a little smaller or what happens there? Yeah, it attaches to the threads on the outside of the barrel. And uh, it, so it does make you know, the, the diameter of the outside of the barrel is slightly smaller, depending on the barrel. It can be somewhat of a big difference, but usually it isn't. There's a, and then, you know, the the bore through the suppressor is larger than the bullet, so it's not like rifling. So mm -hmm. the bullet will travel through that without any friction. That's so why you will get some measurable increase in velocity. Right. Okay, okay. So it's already shot, basically. And uh, it's just going down a, a wider hallway and it doesn't like bang around in there, like that, nothing like that. No, nope, that's the goal is that it does not. <laughs> <laughs> and then what does a silencer do? Like, okay, I get it. You screw it on the end. What's in there? Is it like nacho cheese? How do you, <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what does it do? How does it work? You know, it works pretty much the same as the muffler on your car. There, there are baffles inside, and the gases just expand into that baffle, into the baffles. So by the time the bullet exits, the gases aren't exploding into the environment. They're more. There's a lot less gas to explode because it's all mostly been captured within the suppressor. In fact, the origins of the uh, suppressor and the car muffler really came from a lot of the same sources and the same people. Interesting. You know, when one of the I read that John Moses Browning book, and by the way, fantastic. If you guys are all interested in the history of the old West and one of the great inventors of American history, I mean, on par with name any top notch inv inventor, uh, John Browning is one of those guys. He got inspired for gas powered blowback, you know, cycling by watching his friends at a range shoot, and he would see the gas wave come out and then it would make the, the grass, the gas made the grass flow like this and he's like i can use that energy he could see the energy thought it was there but then he realized it was there and so he was able to say we can reroute a little bit of this and then make that slide that action happen to to make the uh, next round come in and you can create semi-automatic or fully automatic power but you're capturing the rest of the gas or most of the rest of it and doing something else with it that's right just letting it dissipate right yeah. capturing it in there and let it dissipate out more naturally what does that mean? So, you know, it's, it's, you have this very high pressure explosion coming out of the end of the barrel. So instead of exploding, it's being captured within these baffles. By the time it gets into the end of the can, it's more of a just dissipation of the remaining gases. That is why larger silencers are quieter, right? The, uh, the larger it is, the quieter it will typically be. Let me see if I can explain this back then. Okay. So, when the uh, when you pull the trigger, the primer is struck. It causes the uh, the explosion. The 
powder is cooked off and the the bullet is essentially going as fast as it ever will go at that instant. It gets spun around a little bit with some rifling, passes through the silencer, and nothing really else changes about it. It's afterwards or just in front of that when the gas starts to get captured into that canister where the silencer comes in. And so instead of that force being just projected through the um, through the barrel and maybe through the action a little bit, if it's got an open action or a different kind of ejection system, um, that gas is now mostly going into that canister, and so you're hearing less of a boom. Still a big boom because there's still an explosion. Is that pretty good? Am I, am I doing that all is, right? I think you, you pretty much nailed it. Well, good. All right. Show <laughs> over. <laughs> no, that it, it's – but these are the things that, like, we don't know. Like, again, well, you always just see the guy with his pelican case and his silencer, and he assembles his weapon. It's, it's a trope. It's not, it's not reality. When someone comes to you to buy a silencer, what's their main purpose? I mean, obviously, it's cool, right? Because it is cool in the movies. But what's the main functional reason why they buy these things? You know, most people are buying them for hearing safety. For me, I bought my first one for going hunting with my son, right? Just hearing protection for him. He wouldn't wear his muffs when he was in the blind. And he was already deaf in one ear anyway. So we're trying to protect the other. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. But it's it's... You know, just you're hanging out at the range with friends. You don't want to have to double up on the earplugs. You can just wear a simple set of plugs and you're good to go. But hunters, that's another one. You're out all day. You don't want to wear muffs because they're uncomfortable. And you're only going to take yeah. one shot, right? And you're so you, part of the environment, you know? Yeah. Like so, you want to hear. Yeah. yeah. So people end up not wearing muffs or plugs. And by the time they're in their 70s, they can't hear anything because they've lost a little bit of hearing every year and it's cumulative. And when you're hunting, let's say you're out deer hunting and you are using a, a silencer again, someone else who's out there hunting with you, you have better chance to hear them, but also they're still going to hear you. If you shoot around they're like, Oh, well, I was a guy over in that direction. And now you yeah. can act accordingly, you know, what, um, what kind of reaction do you get from folks who go to the range? Are they, are they freaked out? Are they, how do they respond? You know, when I first got into this business, there was a lot more of that. It was, you know, even range employees weren't quite sure how to deal with it. They weren't sure if they were legal. Now it's they're they're becoming more and more common, and a lot of people kind of they're starting to be seen as more polite than they used to be. Right? Whenever the range has a can, it's a good day. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't have to wear the big muffs because the guy next to you has got a seven millimeter magnum with a break. Oh my God. Yeah. Some <laughs> of these are just like, please, would you stop? You know, <laughs> know. there's a gun that I, I don't buy a whole lot of guns. But there's a pistol that I would love to have and it has like this NATO round and it's a really, it's like a, it's like a five, five, six round, but it's in a pistol and it just, and it's super high speed. Uh, round uh, high speed and that it goes fast for everybody listening and it just it's just this tiny little barrel it's like a 22 size barrel on his regular size it just goes boom and you're like holy shit what is this thing? what came out of here <laughs> that is the perfect candidate for that because when you shoot that gun it makes people step back and look and go what was that and then they see this gun with this tiny little hole and you're like it's it's like a 22 but it's just a pistol and um, i think you're thinking of the five seven and that's man that thing yeah, that's is great too Oh, does it really? Yeah. Why does it suppress great? What What about it? Because, I mean, obviously, there's a big boom going on. There is. It's very loud round, but it's a pretty small case. So it's a, there's not a whole lot of gas to capture. Okay. Okay. So the amount of gas impacts it. Yeah. And, and I think it is a 5.7. It's like HK makes one. And yeah. It's just, it's just a kick in the pants. But, um, you know. <laughs> not something you want to be in front of. I wanted to uh, <laughs> back up to we talked about the folks at the range and they were kind of freaked out. And these are gun people primarily. I mean, they spend their time and their money going to a range. What about folks who aren't comfortable with guns? I mean, I, I talked to so many people from like England, you know, when we do our musical based guests and they've never fired a gun. They're like if I come out, I'd like to fire a gun. I've never even touched one. Right. So how do folks on that end of things respond to like, Hey, so what do you do? And you're like, I sell silencers. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a few years ago, this lady, because I had a big silencer shop sign on the back of my truck, you know, and a lady pulls up to me at a stoplight and I always drove with my windows open. So it's just it is what it is. But she rolls down her window and it's an older lady. She said, so what is silencer shop? I was like, you know, between cars, I'm like, I sell silencers for firearms. And she just looked forward and rolled up her window. <laughs> 
I don't know what she thought I sold. I don't know what she thought a silencer was. Right. We had another lady walk into the store once. This is 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, you have to think we got guns on the back wall, all the silencers, the demo. And her first question is, do you sell silencers for sewing machines? Which to this day, I don't know what that is. Yeah. But I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Is there any explaining it though? I mean, okay, look, I know you can explain it, but but are, is it possible? I mean, there's folks that just don't like guns, right? Like they have a hard no, hard stop at gun, and you're like, and I sell an, you know, a thing that goes. You have to have a gun to even use. You know, do do they have the ability to go? Huh? Never thought about that. That does make sense. Yeah, most people, yes, most people, even if they disagree philosophically, will listen. And a lot of people can be convinced because there's not a bunch about silencers that's dangerous, right? I have run into a few people where it was just, there was no getting past it. And I'm not a very confrontational person, so I'll just let it go. It's not that important to me. Yeah. But it's a, you know, I don't want to get sit there and get chewed out over. Yeah. I, I'm never going to change their mind. Right. Yeah. How legal are these things? I, I really honestly don't know. I live in California. I'm assuming I'm not allowed to have one, but. That's uh, true. Okay, yeah. I, and unless you have the right kind of licensing and everything else, you can always get one. How how legal are these things? You know, in the rest of the country, I think there there are actually 46 states, I believe, where silencers are legal. You they're they're registered at the federal level. You pay a $200 tax, takes about 10 months to get approved. But then you're kind of good to go. And the background check is pre, is pretty much the same background check you admit, get buying a gun at the gun store. But in California, that is not one of the states where they're legal to get. And it's, you have to have a pretty high level of licensing to have possession of them in California. So you can't even possess it or sell it then unless you've got like an FFL plus. Yeah, in in California, no. But in the rest of the country, absolutely, yes. <laughs> um. And maybe you don't know the answer. Is, is there any evidence that silencers increase crime in any way or lethality in any way at all? Is there is there any justification for And I'm not, I'm not beating on my state. You know, we don't know about silencers. And so it is good to have these conversations. But is there any justification in a, in a harder embargo on those things? You know, the, the reality is, if you look at the crime statistics with silencers, it is almost zero. It's so, so rare. It's, you know, I, if there's one crime committed every 10 years, <laughs> I'd be yeah. surprised, but yeah. it's, a uh, they're, they're just not used very much because they don't lend themselves to kind of a criminal use case, right? They're, they just make the gun bigger. What? I get that. And I, philosophically I'm with you, but it sure feels uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not you know, just, yeah. Well, the, the reason for that is because silencers have been regulated in the 1930s. They started being regulated. There was a $200 tax put in place in 1934, this registration in 1934. So since then, the only information people have gotten about them is from TV. You know, if if the only information you had about car wrecks was from TV, I remember in the 80s, every car wreck involved an explosion. Everybody in the car died, right? It's a, we would all think that if we weren't driving cars and we weren't seeing that that's not true. Silencers, we just haven't had the exposure, right? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, you're right. I mean, like, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on was just to get rid of some of these myths and at least give us a chance to have it. But you did say it takes almost a year and it sounds like quite often, I mean, the cost of more than my gun to acquire one of these things. Yeah, it's two hundred dollars just for the tax. Wow, that's that's a lot of money. Um, <laughs> what does that tax go to? Like, you know, silence, actually, silence or uh, uh, you know, anti uh, death laws or something? <laughs> it actually just goes into the federal general fund. So ATF doesn't keep it; it just goes straight over the feds. Yeah, and then what does a silencer cost? I mean, you know, obviously there's going to be a range, but ballpark. The range for most silencers is going to be between about three and eight hundred dollars. So, mm -hmm. and that's running from your rimfire to your rifle. There are some outside of both ends of it, but most of them fall in that range. And how long does a silencer last? I mean, again, in general, you might as well consider that they last forever. They usually don't start having any issues at all till about one hundred fifty thousand rounds, and most people don't ever shoot that much. Right. 
Right. Does it, obviously I know what the answer is going to be, but I want to ask, uh, and I'm fascinated by all this John Browning stuff that I've learned. So, you know, he invented the actuation where the barrel floats and moves as the slide moves. Does that inhibit that at all? Or does it cause extra jams per, I don't know, a thousand rounds or anything? You know, on pistols where they've got that tilting barrel, you actually have to have a device at the front of the silencer called a piston. And what it does, there's a spring in there and a piston, and it'll decouple the barrel from the suppressor so that the gun can cycle. But you'll actually feel, every time you shoot, you'll actually feel a little bit of a bounce Hmm. as the suppressor resettles into position. It's really fast, but you can feel it. And then how does that impact your ability in, in, in specifically with the tilting barrel pistols? How does that uh, impact your ability to send the, the next round down range accurately? You know, it, it's all a matter of kind of training and getting used to it. Yeah. It's a, I, I've never really found that it's any, it does reduce the recoil by enough that that probably counteracts the bounce right. in a lot of ways. Interesting. And what about on something that's like uh, meant for shooting rapidly like um and, and we'll just talk about folks that are authorized to to have some kind of uh, semi and full automatic you know like i used to have a sten when i patrolled a lot um or an hk uh, mp5 you know like the you know the short one the k model um how does that impact it when you have a suppressed semi semi-automatic or fully automatic you know sub machine gun i guess you would call it you know there, there are two major things that impact it one is it does help control the recoil so it helps yeah. you stay on target better. The second thing is it increases the blowback of the gun. So like, you know, when you're, you know, the, the, the gases that kind of come out in your face through the back yeah. Yeah. with the suppressor capture in the gas, it kind of builds up the pressure and you actually end up with way more of that gas in your face. You can smell it. You can feel it. You have a stripe across your face. Yeah. You know, it's a, makes it a little less comfortable. So people do a lot to kind of counteract that aspect of it. But most civilians don't have full auto anyway because right. right. they're so expensive. I, I can't, what does that cost? I've just got to ask. You know, to get into those things, last I looked, you're starting at about 30 grand. We wow. transferred one through the store that was like $8 million. What? It's a, they are so, so crazy expensive. Yeah. There's, you watch TV, you think everybody's got them, but man, I tell you, people aren't buying these things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a specific purchase that you want. And it's not like you're on the money with this. This is to reduce hearing harm. I, I get it. Um, I wish I'd had more of that stuff around me, you know, just especially for training. You know, maybe I wouldn't mm-hmm. use that because, again, you're like, hang on, I'm still pulling out my gun. You know, <laughs> uh, what's the holster look like for a silenced weapon? You know, you know, yeah, that's right. They're, they're, they're funky. I've actually never carried one of the suppressors. just too, too unwieldy. When, when I carry, I carry without a suppressor. Yeah. You would have to. I mean, it's if you had a pistol, it's going to be six, seven inches longer. Is that right? Yeah. It, I mean, they do make shorter ones, but they get louder as they get shorter. Right. So there's a trade-off. Right. Right. That's interesting, man. I, I, uh, I'm fascinated. By the way, everybody should go check out silencershop.com where you can get more information about that. Uh, you guys also, and I'm curious about this. So one of the things I'm curious about is you guys have taken this uh, long and expensive process, but you've really like systemized it. You're like, it's just these eight things. I, th- I think it's eight when I looked on the website. Very simple. Like you need to upload this picture and blah, 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 blah. And it's it's pretty simple. Talk about that process that it takes to do it. You know, the process is actually very easy. And that is our business is simplifying that. We're like TurboTax mm-hmm. to the silencer industry, right? We We fill out a lot of paperwork. But it's a, we've got a kiosk network all over the country outside of California. <laughs> we, but we've got a kiosk network. You go to the kiosk. It take, generally takes about five or 10 minutes to go through it. You only have to do that once, no matter how many you buy. And then we've got a mobile app where you can upload a photo. And honestly, we kind of handle the rest. We do the paperwork. We collect the signatures. We mail it all to the ATF. We have FBI certified fingerprint printers that run pretty much nonstop. Mm-hmm. But it's a, uh, that's what we do is submit paperwork. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, uh, and again, it still takes what, 10 months you said? Yeah, that's right. Wow. What's the other uh, restrictive state? You said there were like 48 states. Who else is uh, like California? You know, the big ones are California, New York, Illinois, Hawaii, New Jersey. Yeah. Those are the ones that you really, you, you can't own one at all. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you have some kind of like law enforcement exemption or something right yeah and 
in a lot of those states, even that's hard. Like in California, it has to be a duty suppressor, right? So you can't have a personal one, even if you're in law enforcement. Right. So it, it's yeah. pretty restrictive. Is there a more misunderstood piece of equipment out there? And then why the yeah. heck would you take on something so hard to sell? Why not just sell ice cream? Everybody loves ice cream. <laughs> You know, for me, I, it was, for me, it was one of those things where I actually liked my job. I wasn't looking to start a business. Right. Yeah. And when I bought one, the experience was so hard and went so poorly. In fact, I bought two from two different people and had similar experiences that I thought, you know, I'm just going to help people out in the local area, fill out paperwork. Yeah. And it just exploded. We do two thirds of all the paperwork in the United States now for silencers. But I think the, it all kind of came from that idea that we can simplify this. We can make it easier. Customers don't need to know the details of what goes in box 4A, right? It's like you would hire an accountant to do your taxes. We are that for the silencer industry. Yeah. And then is there any culpability in you guys if someone does something horrible with their silenced weapons? You know, basically they've got the background checks people run through are at least as intense as what people go through for buying a firearm. It's more regulated. The ATF is tracking all of them. I've always perceived that there's actually less risk in the silencer industry than even in the gun industry, just because it's so heavily, I guess, regulated, you know. I would never condone anybody breaking the law, especially when it comes to to firearms and firearm safety and everything. But I want to, I'm curious because we, we often, we struggle with, um, with the control of weapons and how do we safeguard the community? Um, from the people that will use weapons in a, in a negative way. And I've got to say that because that is it is important, and I think we all want to reduce harm. But I also know that you can make a ghost gun. You can fabricate a gun in your home. You know, I mean, the, the, Mr. Browning made a gun when he was eight. You know, I fired a weapon. He just knew how to weld good enough and everything. I don't know if he was eight, but he was a little kid. Um, so. You can make a gun in your house and basically no one would ever know about it. Is the same true for a silencer? Can you just simply make one or is it harder to machine and everything else? They are unbelievably easy to make. So from you from parts at Home Depot, you can make a silencer for about 10 bucks. Now, when the current environment, it may cost more than $10. Yeah. <laughs> the price has gone up on everything. But uh, they're, they're very, very simple to make. And that's pretty much all of the convictions ATF, you know, all the charges they push push out on silencers are all possession related. So it's people just making silencers, right? I mean, any kid who grows up in the country has probably tried to manufacture something just based on what he saw on Walking Dead, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's really where you get in trouble with the ATF because if you have one and it's legit, they've got a record of it. And if you don't, then you've got a record. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So not something you want to screw around with, but most kids don't even know that. Yeah, yeah. What are your barriers to to scaling this? I mean, obviously you've got the uh, TurboTax aspect of it figured out. Are you constantly like it's like um the emerging marijuana business, right? Like my my cousin's got a place in Montana. He's been on the uh, show before. Um, and if you don't adhere specifically to this path of rules, which are likely to change in the next election and then the next election. You know, your business model is constantly in flux trying to either deal with deregulation and, and re-regulation constantly. Is that impacting what you guys do? Yeah, it does. That That's actually a big part of our business. We have, we are way more of a software company than people realize. We've got half a dozen software developers on staff full time. We're constantly upgrading and adapting and changing and we have to be ready for anything to change at any moment really right and is this is this a party specific problem for you like if there are democrats in charge you guys have to change to be more controlled or is this just political that that we we just don't like silencers you know i I think a lot of this obviously the republicans tend to be more pro-gun in general but the atf is just kind of the ATF. It's, it's the ATF that we're dealing with for the most part, because for the most part, the laws aren't changing. It's the ATF either reinterpreting or, or changing requirements or pushing out new rule changes. That's where a lot of the uh, churn comes from. Another thing that I've noticed is uh, if you sign up for a concealed carry, even in California where it's, you're allowed to have it, some sheriffs just won't 
won't put it out. If you're in, you're in their county, they're just not going to issue that. So are there sheriffs out there that be like, hey, um, this is legal for you in whatever, you know, fill in the blank county of whatever, Illinois. Uh, however, that sheriff there is going to be a problem if they see it. They're going to arrest you. And you might be innocent, you might, but you got to go in front of a judge. You got to bail out. And it's going to be a $10,000 expense no matter what you do, even if you are correct. Does that exist for you guys? You know, on a, it is a very, very unlikely thing. It's in the time I've been in this industry, I'm only aware of one or two times that that's ever happened. Mm. And I suspect I'd probably know about it <laughs> most yeah. every time. So it's, it's not it's very common. Direct competition at all? Is there like a silent shoppy instead of a? <laughs> no, it's a, we have, there are a lot of smaller players in the industry that are, mm-hmm. you know, competition, but I think that's a healthy market, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a, our competition is a lot of little guys. Yeah. How do you scale? You know, like I said, we scale everything we do. We scale by trying to automate as much as we can. It's all, we throw software problems instead of throwing people at them. Mm-hmm. That way our people can focus on customer service and talking to customers. And yeah. it makes it a more enjoyable experience for customers. When they when there's somebody there they can talk to and the software is doing the stuff that can be automated. Is there a um, bucket of beers kind of bundle? You're like, hey, if you buy six silencers, uh, we'll give you you know one off or whatever. Or do you have to even discount these things at all? You know, we do do promos periodically. It's a I think it's like any other industry. So it kind of depends on the season and busy season, slow season, stock levels. There there are lots of factors. Yeah. I mean, as we all get more and more deaf as we get older, because we've got, you know, cans on and earbuds in and just sound is jamming into our ear holes. I think that there's definitely a, a, a marketplace for this to, uh, you know, save our ears because I know man, my ears are screwed. I've got bad tinnitus in both ears and I wear hearing aids. And so I'm definitely in the market for something like that. But if you have 20 guns and you and I both know guys that have 20 guns and they're like, oh, yeah, or, you know. Uh, is there like a universal suppressor that you could get that would enable you to not have to buy 20 different suppressors or is it always like, you know, bore and everything specific? You know, there are universal suppressors. The problem is there's this giant trade-off between efficiency and versatility. Mm -hmm. The more versatile you get, the less effective it actually is. So I'll usually tell people you can do that to a point, but you cross a line where it's just, you're not going to like it anymore, right? Yeah. You got this gigantic bore that'll run anything, and, but it doesn't do anything well. Yeah, but like if you've got one of those guns, that's like uh, you can swap the barrel out and have a nine mil or a you know or whatever else and whatever else you know thirty eight or whatever. I, I'm assuming you could find something that would be a good compromise there because you're not oh, making. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What? Um, if not for sound. And a little bit of coolness factor. Is there another reason that why you would buy a silencer for your weapon? Yeah. You know, aside from sound, the big ones are reduced recoil. It's pretty significant, the, the reduction in recoil. Um, it will actually increase accuracy and increase velocity. So, you know, for competitive shooters, it, it can be a real advantage in the right situations. So it yeah, th- those are really the main reasons, but sound is always is always at the top of the list. And so if you're competing and you're doing, you know, action rangers or whatever you want to call them, uh, there's a lot of different ones. Uh, are silencers prohibited because they provide an advantage or does it like do whatever you want? You're you doing know, most rangers. action shooting, like especially like the pistol, like IDPA, IP6, stuff like that. You, you, you can't use them. And I think they'd probably be in the way, especially trying to draw from a holster and stuff like that. The, uh, when you get into like the precision shooting long range, that's where they start to to play into it and be, and be an advantage. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I never th- realized that it would um, increase the speed and, you know, I, I guess the uh, ability to hit something further away. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a selling point for me alone. And is that, is that how long can a silencer be before that stops being beneficial? Like you don't want a 15 inch silencer because now you got to like put it on a, a, a mop. <laughs> That is true. And you need that. You need that. You really need the bullet not to touch anything in it. So the longer the silencer is, the harder it is to get that bullet out the end without it starting to bounce off baffles. 
right? Yeah. There's there's a point where going past that becomes unproductive, yeah, and dangerous, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, dangerous. Yeah, you're right about that. I had a question about um, that part. Of it. Let me think about what it was. Well, tell me something I don't know about silence. We've learned a lot already, but, but fill in some blanks here for us. You know, I mean, really, I, I think we, we've talked a lot about a lot of different topics. This is not a normal interview. You're getting oh. into a lot of the tech stuff, which is awesome, actually. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think people, let me just talk about something else. People talk about shooting them wet, right? I don't know why this comes to mind almost randomly. Yeah. You can actually put a little bit of gel or liquid inside the suppressor, especially on pistol cans, and they will shoot significantly quieter. That That's one that people always seem to want to test when they first get the silencer. The problem is with the blowback is they are crazy messy. You end up with this splattered crud all over you, and don't wear a light-colored anything. Yeah. Because <laughs> you'll just be covered in black soot when you're done, right? But, but they are quieter. Yeah. That's interesting. So you you get it wet with some kind of gun based oil or gel or what is it like not hair gel. honestly you can buy pretty much anything you can get wire pulling gel from Home Depot uh, wow. <laughs> squirt some of that inside of it it works great you know yeah it's just a lot more cleanup later on though on you and a and lot out. more it's messier and just on you on the gun everywhere do you guys make all of your own silencers or do you how do you source those. You know, we don't make any. We we deal with all the major manufacturers. Uh, the biggest ones are really Dead Air, Silencer Co., Rugged, Q. There, there's a whole list of really good manufacturers all over the country. Silencers cannot be imported or exported. So it's a, uh, they're all made in the U.S. and sold in the U.S. Yeah. That is, it, I had no idea. So how do you find out if, um, what the rules are specifically in your state? Um, or in the state that you're traveling to, like if I'm going to go to Texas, totally a different set of rules. You know, uh, reciprocity does. I'm sure it doesn't apply, but maybe there's some kind of reciprocity angle as well. Yeah, the thing is, the thing about suppressors is they're actually regulated at the federal. Level. So the only real differences between states are the states where they're not legal at all. Okay. Right. If it's legal in your state, you can shoot it there, hunt with it, do whatever, travel to another state where it's legal, do all yeah. the same things. There's really no problem and no real issue with reciprocity because it's federal. Yeah. Can you get them customed at all? Like, uh, I want to have mine nickel plated or chrome plated or whatever. You know, people have their kind of, you know, I want it like desert camo uh, painted. You know, what are those kind of things? You know, there's some of that. And the silencer market is so small compared to the gun industry that that kind of stuff just hasn't taken off yet because there's not enough to make it worth it. Right. But uh, as as the industry grows, we're starting to see more and more of that. You know, people want their real tree camo or paint job or special material. I mean, it's it's starting to be that way. We love it. We want it to match our gun. I mean, sometimes I you don't stand out. But if you've got a subdued weapon, you don't want a shiny, you know, or a pretty. You want it to be a little bit ugly, maybe, because that's your style. Would you say is are silencers being normalized or is the pushback just starting now that people realize that these things are becoming more prevalent? Like how would you characterize the marketplace? When I first came into this market, even gun people thought they were illegal and thought that you shouldn't own them. Mm -hmm. Right. That has shifted significantly. So among the gun industry, people are starting to understand them. They've seen them, they've experienced them and they want one or have one. Right. Yeah. For non-gun owners, especially the ones who are like super anti-gun, I think silent, and they've never talked to anybody and just don't know what they're about. Yeah, people like that can tend to be anti-silencer, but if you understand them at all, there's a, there's not a lot to hate. Like I said before, they're a safety device. Yeah. So you kind of have to be a pretty rabid anti-gun person that just doesn't know what you're talking about to not like silencers. And I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush there. I'm just. <laughs> Well, and, and, and to be to be 100% honest, um, anti-gun people are oftentimes very unaware of what they what they don't know. And, and right. uh, I, I read a story about a lady who was very uh, anti-police and thought that they should shoot people in the arm and all these things. And they put her in a simulator and uh, attached her her daughter's face to one of the cyber targets. And she shot her daughter. And she's like, oh, I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah. This, you know, and and I. Let me just make sure I say this clearly for the YouTube people. 
This is all virtual. This actually did not happen. In the- <laughs> but you go into a simulator, try to make them real and to, to increase that effect. They were able to do that. And, and it changed how this one person, at least in that moment, how they saw this stuff. And, and a lot of times uh, we, we have to do the work to understand the thing that scares us to make sure we understand it. Cause it's easy to be terrified of a silencer, but the reality is, is it's, it's a lot, it's a lot less terrifying and way more rate. I didn't realize it was 10 months to get the thing. Yeah. Well, people get all their information from TV. Right. And that's, yeah. you know, it's, you, that's where you hear this stuff like, Oh, just shoot the gun out of their hand. Oh yeah. <laughs> That only works in Westerns. <laughs> oh, yeah. You would brag about that shot for the rest of your life. <laughs> yes, you, know? you would. I think some other smart ass would be like, why'd you miss? You know, because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shoot it out of their hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard to hit a human sized target, let alone a bicep sized target. You know, like it's just, yeah. yeah. And, and then also you maim someone's arm for the rest of your life to eat. Um, yeah. yeah. We're not going to solve that that part of it. Uh, I wish we had better non-lethal ways to deal with problems, but we don't. And so uh, we have to learn about these things. The silencer market is interesting. If someone wants to get into this business, they're like, man, I'd love to do that. Do you guys have like a, a, a franchise kiosk set up or anything at all? Or, oh, or how- Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It, you know, any, you, you have to have the licenses to be able to sell guns. Right. But it's a, we're, we're a distributor. We work with most everybody who sells silencers across the country, we've got about 4,000 dealers and we're always signing up new ones. If you want a kiosk, no problem. We'll, we can set you up with one, yeah. but it's a, uh, yeah, we're, we're happy to work with anybody outside of California. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. We're working on it. We actually just passed the, uh, you know, some, some pro gun legislation in San Diego recently. We'll, we'll see what happens uh, for a while. And I think this is true now. You did not have to have a background check to buy ammo because for a while before that, you had to have a background check to buy ammo and have the right kind of ID and everything. It was it was a little bit bananas here. Um, I think that that is not the case now. But again, we were so anti-gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, I digress. Anyhow, I. Uh, yeah, this is neat, man. I, I love talking about these things and the ability to to understand something that is scary. Because I look, I, I got to be honest, I fired them, but I would never try to own or even consider owning one. Now I'm considering it because I do have only so much hearing left, and I don't shoot a whole lot. But if I spent, let's say, seven hundred dollars, which is more than the cost of my gun, you know, to to buy a suppressor and pay the tax and everything else, um, I might. I might be able to shoot a little more because I definitely am mindful of that and, and careful that I don't want to expose my ears to that much damage, you know? Right. You know, one of my favorite things to do, and I, I, I don't know why I like, I like going out to the range. I'm a member of a private club here in Austin and they're all the old guys who are always there, right? They're super fun to hang out with just nice guys. They know their stuff, but you get to talking to them and it's always like, eh, what? You know, and they're, uh, and it's just from a lifetime of, like I said, that one shot per year yep. out in the field hunting with whoever, yeah, and it, it, it never comes back. I am you one of that the, little, what? little ringing and Ooh. you feel like you're good the next day, but you, <laughs> yeah, yeah no. that's right. <laughs> just all interrogatives. That's how I started every conversation. My poor, uh, my poor significant other has to deal with that all the time. <laughs> and, and the uh, the lot if, if you don't have hearing loss, you don't understand like being in a crowded restaurant. It's so hard to hear anything because all you hear is this. Your ear can't pick out the the signal from the noise anymore. Driving or walking on a street that has cars going by and you're talking to somebody, damn near impossible. Um, it can be dangerous. You can you know you could walk into a problem because you can't hear. And if you're in the gun shooting business, you know it makes a lot of sense to have one. That's yeah. Awesome. Interesting. Well, look, I, I don't want to keep you the whole time. I mean, we've covered so much ground. Is there anything you want to say that maybe we didn't cover at all? I mean, apart from wet silencers, anything else out there? You know, I mean, really, I we we post a ton of information on silencershop.com. It's a if you want more information, we've got you know YouTube videos, you know all the social medias that are out there. You just check out the site, and there, like I said, there's a lot of information. Yeah. And we, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. 
I got one of those loud airplanes flying over. Louder than a pistol, maybe. With yes. <laughs> Stick your head in that engine. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, seriously, a Barrett? Oh, my God. Every time a Barrett has been fired by me, I'm like, I am a little closer to death and death. <laughs> Look at that one round. I don't care how much hearing protection you have. If you fired a Barrett 100 times, you, you've degraded your life substantially. Those things... <laughs> And you get into those big bore guns. Like I love shooting a 338 Lapua. Sure. Because for whatever reason, that round suppressed is just fantastically fun because it makes such a gigantic difference. You take a round that's painful, even with double plugs. Yeah. And you bring it down to a level of comfortable, right? So it's a it's it's an impressive, impressive difference. Now the well, silencers look- are big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are. I mean, there is a cool factor. I, I'm not going to lie about that. There is definitely a cool factor. I want one because I want one. But do I need one? And then I think about the hearing part, and I do. Like, if I can reduce the harm to my ears, man, I, I want to have that. Uh, I'm going to be in Texas, actually, Austin, possibly uh, this August. So I'll have to come out. We'll have to go do the range. That'd be a lot Absolutely. of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Need some suppressed stuff. Uh, how many suppressors do you own? Can I ask? Is that okay? Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you, I wish I knew the answer to that. It's a, if you count all the one silencer shop owns a lot, me okay. personally, maybe 15 yeah. ish, but that's a little bit of a guess. I, I don't know for sure. In the business of doing that. How about, how about traveling with them? Like if you're going to go to shot show, uh, are you able to just do you have to check them? How does that work? I should ask that up front. You can check them. You have to treat them just like a gun. And one of the best things about traveling with a silencer or a firearm. We've had TSA, and I'm not gonna knock TSA. I mean, they're doing their job, I guess. But the uh, we've had them open up cases, drop stuff out on the floor. It looks like they're jumping up and down on it, then smash it back into the case. If you throw a gun in that case, you can lock it. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times when we have sensitive equipment, even non-shooting related, we'll throw a gun in the case so TSA doesn't touch it, right? It's a, uh, in some ways, Traveling with a gun's not such a bad thing. <laughs> now you wouldn't want to travel somewhere you can't take it, but I want to clarify generally this, speaking. I understand. You're saying that if you travel with a, a pistol or a gun of some kind and you intend to bring a silencer to, to, to put them in the same case because the TSA might drop or otherwise misplace or whatever your uh, because they're gonna open the silence case. They're not gonna open no. Case. Is that what, right? What I'm saying is the silencer is treated just like a gun. So if you throw that in the locked case, mm-hmm. even without a gun, mm-hmm. TSA can't open it because as far as federal regulations go, that silencer is a gun. Okay. Even though we all know it's not, it's regulated like it is. Right. Okay. Okay. So you can put it in its own case and send it and they're not going to, you're saying like in general, when TSA opens things, they don't always do the best job of handling it because they're busy yeah and so this prevents them from opening it throw a gun in the case or a silencer and then you can lock it and then just in general for those that have never flown with a weapon and i'm saying flying like you show up to the airport and surrender your weapon and they it ends up where you go but how is that when you walk in the door at the delta terminal you know you're walking up to check it in is there anything like how does that work or do you have to go see a sky cap how does it work when you show up at the airport with the pistol legally you know for for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, but it depends on the airport. You walk into Austin, and they know what they're doing. They're cool about it. They're, it takes you an extra five, ten minutes maybe, and you're done, right? I've walked into airports where they're not so gun-friendly, mm. and you would think I had a bomb strapped to my chest, right? They act like it's like, oh, no, what do we do? And they have to find the one person that knows the regulations and they make it into this process that it shouldn't be. But for the most part, in gun-friendly airports, it's pretty easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So if you don't know and you've not flown with that, you're saying plan for an extra hunk of time to get yeah. through. There's some freaking out. And then you're not breaking the law by bringing it to the airport, to the check-in, check-in counter. That, that's what you're supposed to do. Is that correct? Yeah. Have it in a locked case. They'll open it and look at it, but you do need to have it in a locked case. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that all that stuff, you just find all that on the TSA side on what what yeah. a lot and all that kind of thing. Anything in closing, or do you want to ask me any questions? No, I uh, like I said, I, I think we covered a lot of ground today. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was, it was a really neat conversation. I don't often get to do like a, a hard like Q and A kind of session because usually it's conversational. But we um, 
I just, it's interesting. It's fascinating to me. And I love the fact that you uh, give us your time to talk about the silencer shop. Everybody go check out the silencer shop, silencer shop.com. And uh, you can find out more, whether you want to be a, uh, a, I guess a franchised kiosk owner and, and legally, you know, sell silencers or whatever it is. These guys have the software and the services that'll get you to where you want to go. And if you want to buy a silencer, obviously go check these guys out. They'll, they'll take care of you and they'll simplify the paperwork process, which is a big hurdle. Hey man, I'm coming on. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later.